Hey uh, guys, welcome back. I don't hope you had a good break. Okay. Right. So in the in the previous lecture, we uh, com just, uh, concluded on the chapter of women in ministry. This is chapter twenty two. Okay. Um, hope you all are doing all right. Yeah. Any okay. Right, um, so let's move on to chapter 23. Chapter 23, uh, this is the section four uh, in the book, The House of God. Right, chapter 23, in this chapter, we will uh, discuss about the systems and processes uh, within the local church. Right, uh, in the, one of the chapters that we covered in the last uh, class was about order. Uh, the importance of uh, having order, which uh, will help in avoiding all the confusion and the chaos uh, when there is order. And so um, this chapter addresses a few of that, uh, some practical aspects of uh, ministry and organization. Um, and in all of this, again, this is uh, these are just the guidelines or pointers. Um, this chapter is not to say that uh, your church should look just like this, uh, your church should have all of these. Uh, you can take uh, whichever you think might work for your church and adapt or you know um, be flexible with it. Right. And um, so, some of the things that we want uh, are important uh, for a proper organization is have excellence, uh, ensure proper functioning, right, and to multiply and increase what is being done. Right. To have excellence. Uh, ensure proper functioning of what is being done and then um, the end goal is to multiply and increase right so the job uh, our job is not just to manage uh, you know what is happening to to make sure that it's, it's happening week after week but then um, another responsibility is to make sure that your area of ministry grows as well okay Right, so um, our motivation in ministry organization and developing the organization is that we can build local churches according to God's blueprint. Right, that is the motivation, right, of uh, in ministry organization is that uh, we do everything that we are doing according to God's uh, blueprint. Uh, right, so we present uh, some of the ideas from this chapter. So um, the ideas that's uh, presented in this chapter is uh, kind of in line. Uh, drawing a parallel from the human body and how the human body is organized and functions right because now we say uh, we, we we are the body of Christ isn't it and so um, you know pastor has taken some pointers a parallel from how a human body functions and then how we can uh, how the church as a body of Christ uh, can function as well right and so uh, there are totally nine systems uh, by I, by no stretch of imagination, uh, I am a medical student. <laughs> uh, nothing can be far from further away from the truth. Um, but I, <laughs> but uh, let's see uh, what it has to say. So page uh, one forty four, <clears throat> right? Um. So the first system out of the nine that we uh, look at, uh, drawing a parallel from a human body uh, to a church, is a circulatory system. Right, uh, and what that system does is it kind of cares for every part of our body, isn't it? Every organ, um, every, it reaches, uh, and so what does it do? Uh, it develops more veins, arteries, uh, capillaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so some of the things, what this system focuses on, is that every individual in your congregation receives care and nurture. And that's what this system does enough for our body is that every single organ, uh, you know, every vein, every joint receives is being cared for and nurtured for. Similarly, uh, your church or your ministry should have an uh, uh, have a system where every single individual is cared for, right? And that's where we uh, some of the examples is uh, you can have uh, what we have at APC is one on one mentoring. Uh, you know, are you meeting with the team members? Uh, have small groups, in other words, cell groups or life groups. Um, member care team. Uh, member care team is a team where they would they'll make, uh, for example, uh, if you have first time visitors who visits our church, 
you know, for the first time. That's why they're called first time visitors. Uh, so we have a team. Uh, I mean, we pass around a, a, a card where they will write their name, the phone number, their email address. And what the member care team does is during the week, they will follow up uh, with the person who came to APC for the first time. We call them up and say, like, hey, uh, how are you doing? Did you enjoy the service? Do you have any feedback? Um, are you from the same city? Are you part of another church? Uh, are you are you looking to make APC your home church uh, and whatnot? And if they do say, yes, I'm looking to make APC my home church, uh, the next step is we need to, we want to plug them or get them plugged in to a, a life group. A smaller group that's what we call it as a cell group isn't it so what are we doing here in this process is we're not just ignoring okay this individual came for the first time and then just walk away without encountering uh, with an actual person who just came to a search service and felt like strangers and went back right so the importance is making sure everybody feels important they are cared for nurtured for and these are just first time visitors and we also have another team called uh, the one phone call team one phone call team is the only objective of this team is to make one phone call uh, to every single member of the church once a month at least. Okay, uh, someday we will come up with a more creative name, but uh, at the moment it's just one phone call team. So uh, you know uh, we have a team above uh, ten or fifteen people, and um, they will each each. Each, each team member will have a list of, say, 15 people that they will call. They will at least make one phone call a month. It's just give them a quick call and say, how, is, uh, how are you doing? Uh, is there anything I can pray for? Are you plugged into a life group? Uh, is everything all right? Um, so things like that. Right. So what this system does is making sure that every single uh, individual is valued, is cared for, is nurtured for. Right. Um, Another some of the pointers are ministries that you can have specialized counselors to address personal needs, uh, regular seminars, uh, you know, weekends, what we, we have weekend schools, uh, we have workshops uh, constantly happening at APC every month, uh, every weekend, sometimes uh, workshop or seminars on marriage, parenting, finances, uh, workplace, uh, and all of that, right? So but that's a system where everybody it's a place where people can feel cared for nurtured for come and be feel equipped be equipped and be empowered to go and uh, you know uh, do life so that's a circulatory system and the next uh, system is the skeletal system okay what does it do it provides a basic frame a shape and a structure that's what a skeleton system does isn't it uh, i mean uh, yeah, you can imagine a human body without a skeleton. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be very pretty, right? Um, so what it does is there is a structure. There is some so, sort of. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of organized. Right? There's a shape to it, right? There's uh, there's a proper flow to it, so to speak, right? So ensuring structure, shape, and support uh, by having proper leadership proper organization and administration in place. So how can we have this in line for our church, uh, for it to function well, is uh, you need to have a, a proper leadership in place, a proper structure, uh, knowing who's uh, reporting to whom, uh, you know, all the administration department uh, uh, and all of that, right? So leaders are pillars in the church. Uh, in the in the previous chapters, uh, earlier chapters, we uh, learned about how the importance of developing leaders, how we can do that. We're not going to discuss that now, but uh, leaders are pillars uh, in the church, isn't it? Um, so, Holy Spirit can send people to be connected to your local church. You must welcome and receive them. Okay, in most cases, you need to raise up strong leaders within your local church. Uh, who will be a point of contact with uh, with certain individuals okay there is a shape there is a structure uh, right for example if anybody wants to know uh, how they can join the worship team uh, you know it's it should be easy for the people in the congregation to say okay you you, you can meet so and so pastor who's the worship pastor uh, and he'll be he or she will be able to tell you uh, what to do next what are the next steps uh, in order for you to uh, be part of the worship team. So to have a basic shape and structure is key to say the least, right? Um, the next is the next system 
that uh, we can incorporate in our church is uh, drawing a parallel is a muscular system, right? Uh, now this is about muscular system. I mean, we we work out, we do exercise, and just to make sure our muscles are in check and they are growing, they are strong, right? So this is where strength and mobility comes into play, right? Ensuring strength, movement, and mobility in the body. Uh, by ensuring that every believer becomes a minister. Okay, so there is a constant uh, training and equipping uh, that is happening uh, in this system. Okay, the system is only focused on, okay, how can we take the congregation to the next level? Uh, how can we take your team to uh, the next level? Or the, if it's uh, your life group, for example, uh, you know, how can I take the members of my life group to the next level? Are we all growing in the same page? Are we all growing at in the same pace? Uh, you know, are we growing strong uh, in the word, in the spirit, etc., etc. Et right? So the key is to keep this consistent. Um, because in any of this system, uh, guys, uh, one of the keys, I, and I would say, which which is the hardest key or challenging key, is consistency. Uh, Right, and that is something I learned a very valuable lesson. At least I, I've always known the importance of consistency, and I still do continue to learn, uh, ignore sometimes. But then during the pandemic, right, uh, 2020 from March 2020 onwards uh, until uh, this year, I guess January, uh, I learned about the importance of just uh, you know uh, keeping things on the move regularly even if you don't feel like it and so for approximately two and a half years uh, we did youth ministry online we had youth meetings uh, online every friday week after week after week after week after week uh, now did i feel like doing that every week absolutely not 100 percent no um, but the important uh, what was important is that every youth knew that there was youth meeting happening every Friday. And so they can get connected or they can invite their friends and whatnot. Right? So being consistent uh, in every area of life, yes, but in our context in ministry, uh, sets the tone, sets the culture. So people are aware, okay, so there's a system. And now I know where I can go uh, to, you know, to be equipped, to grow stronger in my walk with the Lord, right? To grow spiritually. So training, Mentoring, releasing a small of small group leaders, uh, purposeful teaching, and preaching from the pulpit, right? Uh, choosing topics that are strong that will help people grow. It could be anything, right? The, the topics that you can choose to preach or teach can be endless, right? Having a, a midweek a Bible study, uh, you know, the famous days, the Wednesday Bible study nights, uh, where you choose topics to go deeper. Uh, opportunity for everyone to minister and create a culture where everyone is encouraged to serve. Okay, uh, regular events that equip and mobilize people. Example, weekend school of training. Um, as mentioned at APC, uh, every uh, every month we have a weekend school. Uh, uh, that's an entire day of, of just training. Before it used to be two days. Um, but then uh, we've reduced it to a, a, a one full day, uh, the Saturday from morning to evening. Uh, we cover different topics like healing and deliverance, uh, moving in the prophetic, uh, and and so much more. Okay, so that's the muscular system where you can your ministry or your church uh, needs to have that, uh, and the objective of the system is to um, you know make your uh, church folks uh, more stronger equipping them right and then you have the digestive system uh, system in, uh, which which ensures that a strong uh, anointed and timely ministry of the word so that people receive um, digest and absorb solid spiritual uh, nourishment right this is again in sync with the muscular system right uh, consistent strong ministry of the word from the pulpit 
make additional resources available for people to learn, uh, encourage people to learn and receive from other ministers, uh, create, create a learning culture. Uh, right. Uh, so is, this is another uh, system that is key for strong nourishment. Um, and, and then the other system is the respiratory system, isn't it? Uh, we all need to breathe um, to stay alive. Uh, that's one of the signs that shows us that we are alive. Uh, ensuring a continuous fresh breath, inspiration, and work of the spirit. Uh, right. One of the Hebrew words for spirit is ruah. Uh, which means wind or breath, right? Uh, so, and so ensuring that again there is this continuous work of the spirit uh, in us and in the congregation. And uh, this uh, is getting a little bit more personal, right? Emphasize personal and corporate prayer and worship, right? um, ensuring that they have their strong uh, personal walk with the Lord. Uh, sit times for extended uh, prayer and worship, uh, fasting prayer and whatnot. Stay yielded to the leading and the work of the Spirit. Encourage the use of spiritual gifts, uh, prophecy, tongues, and all others. So uh, this is a very important system, isn't it? Uh, and, and again, it all comes down, and all of the system, I think it all comes down to us as leaders um, to create this culture, uh, a challenging one and to constantly and continuously emphasizing, re-emphasizing the importance of all of this. And ju just so that um, our congregation uh, are growing strong uh, in God, right? Uh, and the next system is the nervous system, which talks about, uh, I mean, it's, it all talks about uh, the sensitivity and the response, isn't it? Like it helps us respond to a certain thing. Uh, it's very important for you to, uh, for the church to have a point where people can respond to or to react to, right? Uh, for example, is, uh, is, there, uh, is there a point where, is there a place where the con your congregation members can uh, send their feedback, right? Some churches can have suggestion boxes, right? Uh, if, uh, if your church can have an email ID uh, where they can send their feedbacks to, that's great. Where you know that that email goes to the entire leadership uh, team of the church, right? So ensuring keen sensitivity and perception of what is happening in the local body and providing a timely response. It's also uh, this system talks about uh, different teams uh, keeping, say, the senior pastor updated. For example, uh, if I'm the worship pastor, uh, it is my responsibility uh, to keep. Uh, my senior pastor updated on what is happening, right? A weekly report or a monthly report, a quarterly report, everything, right? So uh, that's what this system uh, is talking about. Have a system in place where people can give feedback uh, or where you can also share your feedback um, and a culture where your leaders will uh, keep you in the loop of what is happening uh, with the weekly updates, uh, quarterly updates, etc. Right, so create process by which people can provide feedback. That's one. Regular reports by leaders. Uh, be sensitive to what you see and hear in the local church body so that you can respond quickly, act quickly, uh, correct quickly. Uh, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit who can alert you ahead of time uh, when needed. All right, so uh, that's uh, another key system there. And uh, the next system is uh, in doctrine. Uh, endocrine uh, system. Uh, no, it's it's tangible, but it doesn't have this uh, obvious organ, so to speak, right? So, what is an endocrine system? Uh, it's it it's something that releases these uh, hormones, right? That keeps us your thyroid levels in check and and all of that. Now, you will not be aware of it. Like you can't. It's not like your nose and say, okay, where, show me where's your nose and this is the nose. You can't say, okay, where's an endocrine system? You can't point a finger and say that's what it is, kind of a thing. But you will. Their absence will be felt, right? Uh, if they stop producing those hormones, which is very necessary, right? Uh, I mean, there. That's the system uh, which uses hormones to um, to control, coordinate uh, your mood. Your uh, your energy levels, your metabolism, 
your stress levels and all of that it's it's kind of uh it's communicating isn't it um so that's what it that's what that system does and so again a simple system to have constant consistent communication is what the system is talking about right um without overemphasizing these uh, bring in reminders from time to time from the pulpit and through other means about hey what what is happening this week what is happening uh, in church this month um, what is your vision reminding the congregation uh, etc uh, letting them know that there's a weekend school coming up register youth camp youth retreat whatever it is um, so this is a system that you need to have to have constant. It's like a bridge to have communications, um, different modes of communications, and you can have different touch points, uh, social medias. You know, making use of all those platforms to communicate, to making sure that there's you know that this constant communication that is happening, right? And uh, and while while doing all of this, uh, you know, you are creating a culture, a kingdom culture. Um, that goes against uh, uh, every everything else, the cultures of the world. Um, that is not necessary. That is not needed. Right? Like there could be a culture of gossip. Uh, when you are establishing a kingdom culture, you are getting rid of the gossip culture, backbiting, division, strife, competition, um, selfish interests, self promotion, uh, and all of this. Um, so. Is there a system in place um, in your church, in your ministry, uh, how you can identify any of this? Or is all your teaching in all your workshops, uh, are you establishing and teaching about kingdom culture? So all so the cultures of the world uh, are not, are not uh, people are not influenced by the cultures of the world. Right? So regularly filter these things out from the local church body through times of prayer, repentance, and fellowship. And uh, one of the things that we do, uh, at least most of the year, with Bible college students uh, during uh, the beginning is we talk about uh, the publication, Laying the Axe to the Root, right? Uh, which talks about uh, the, uh, the seriousness of self and lust and, uh, and, and jealousy and whatnot. Okay, and so the whole point of all of this is what we've, as we mentioned before, is not just your your role as a minister or or a pastor or a leader is not is not just a role of a manager. Okay, you're not just called. We are not just called to manage things. Okay, this is happening this month, so my job is to manage, making sure that the same thing is happening this month also this week. Yes, that is part of your responsibility, but that is not your only responsibility. But you are always looking to scale and grow, right? Multiply, be fruitful, uh, right? So that is uh, the last system. is a system of growth, uh, right? Uh, is your ministry growing? I right? motivate and engage people to, uh, you know, to evangelize, to win souls, um, lead and encourage all kinds of outreaches locally. Uh, and to regions beyond, uh, equip and release people into church planting and missions. So all of these things are areas where you're looking and very intentional in your ministry to grow. Okay. Uh, yeah. You guys have any questions or thoughts so far with what we've discussed? Okay, right. Um, so the next section talks about uh, local church ministry and um, ministry teams. Okay, the local church ministries. There are different ministries uh, with the church, and then with the different ministries come different ministry teams, right? Um, and so, again, at APC, uh, we have teams that serve in specific church ministries. Right, uh, the way it's functioned or the way it's set up, uh, you look at in page uh, 147 at the bottom of 147, there are uh, different kinds of local church ministries and teams that serve in that area. Okay, uh, one is ministries and teams that are centered around ministry functions, and uh, ministry and teams that are centered around felt needs, and the other ministries and teams that are centered around specific events. Okay, uh, 
ministry and teams centered around ministry functions, uh, centered around felt needs and specific events. And so this is how it's set up and organized at APC. Okay, uh, coming down to the next page, you see some of the church ministries centered around ministry functions, uh, the worship teams, right? So worship teams uh, responsibility is to minister, right? Worship team members are ministering to people, uh, you know, every Sunday when as they lead in worship. So, uh, and with that team comes team members and there has to be team leaders, right? So that's the way it's set up. So, and just look at that uh, list of teams. Um, that function in that way is the worship teams, the prayer and intercession teams, life group, uh, mission teams, performing arts teams, schools outreach teams, which is known as the catalyst uh, at APC, which goes to different schools and colleges to minister, uh, counseling team, um, member care, media, internet publications, uh, evangelism teams, um, and so on and so forth, right? So. In all of these teams, all peoples of all ages work together in teams. What is important to know there is all people of all ages work together in teams. Uh, just a very quick example. Uh, the first team in ministry function is a worship team, isn't it? Um, right. So one of the difference between the worship team and a band, be it a Christian band, right um so a, a band is just very inclusive it's like it says us four and no more right? that's what the band like that's the that's what it's all about it's a, us four and no more it's a full boy band or full it's just a girl band uh etc etc while the local church worship team is an exclusive it's open for all ages right from the young and to the old Right. Uh, that's one of the uh, lessons that we can learn from David's worship team uh, in First Chronicles 25 is that uh, the young and the old ministered in the house of the Lord uh, as one. Right. So that's just an example just to say that all people of all ages work together in teams. Right. Uh, we can have many teams uh, where appropriate. We provide formal and informal uh, training uh, on the job. So there are certain teams uh, that needs training for you to be part of for you to serve for example a setup team if you uh you know you need to know um how to roll you'll be trained on how to uh, roll the cables uh you know it's not as simple as just putting it together as it seems uh knowing which connection goes where the different all the technical names the words for different kind of pins uh, mic stands uh and all of that right and there are teams that don't really need a lot of training. For example, uh, you know, the, at the welcome lounge, you don't really need a training to say, hi, welcome to APC, isn't it? <laughs> uh, right? Maybe some people do. It's like, yeah, you need to smile and then say, welcome to APC, you know, but that's about all the training you'll get. Uh, so that's church ministries, which is which are centered around ministry functions. Right, and then there are church ministries which are centered around uh, age and felt needs. What are they? Uh, uh, you have the children's church. Uh, you have the youth ministry, young adults, men's ministry, women's ministry, the mothers, uh, single parents, um, and the list goes on. Right, and the teams leading these ministries will look a little different, isn't it? Um, Right, so these are ministries uh, centered around age and felt uh, needs. And then finally, church ministries centered around specific events. Right, so uh, Sunday services is an event in itself. <laughs> uh, right, every Sunday. Uh, and just look at the teams that goes into it. Uh, this is just in our church here, guys. Okay. Uh, several smaller teams are formed to handle this. Sunday service, what are those teams? Transport team, what is their job? Making sure that, you know, the cars are parked, uh, uh, you know, uh, without any chaos or confusion. Uh, making sure that there are signboards on the road that says parking for APC church. And hospitality and greeters team, uh, just greeting people as they are coming into church. Uh, the parking team, sound and stage setup, 
uh, venue maintenance, um, resource table, information table. A resource table is where we keep all the APC publication books. Uh, information table is where a first time visitor wants to get some more information regarding any ministry. Um, that's the table that they would go to. Uh, ushers, uh, you know, as they as people are coming in uh, to the church building, you're, you're guiding them to sit here to there you're serving uh, the communion elements etc um, that's a team in itself right then there's an ushering team leader uh, making sure that every everything is organized uh, and so guys there are just all of these teams and all these teams uh, have team members and team leaders who have to organize certain things and and you can see everything that goes into making one service happen, right? And if not all, most of this are applicable for, say, other events like youth camp, church camp, uh, and all that, et cetera, et cetera. OK. Um, and so I think in just conclusion of this whole chapter, uh, you know, we, we started off uh, learning about the importance of order and uh, and at the same time, the importance of letting God of the house, right, just be the God of the house. And sometimes we try to, in 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 our attempt to be very organized, we forget who is the God of the house. We uh, suddenly the agenda becomes the God. Uh, our our schedule becomes, uh, you know, everything else. Our process, uh, everything else become takes uh, God's place. Uh, but it all, you know, it just comes down to uh, the, this perfect balance of us being sensitive in everything that we are doing, in every ministry that we are leading, in every ministry that is part of the local church, um, the kingdom of God is being established. And that's the point of this whole thing, right? In us being organized, uh, in us having an understanding of all these different systems that needs to have a place it's not like one day you wake up and say okay i feel like i need to start a church and yeah i'm going to start a church uh, and not you know some of us can have that mentality uh, but uh, church is god's idea it's his blueprint right it's you need to lean into his heart uh, and say okay you know what are all the things you need to do the homework you need to do your research you need to plan you need to be organized and say okay if i'm going to start a church okay what are all the teams that are necessary or importance what are the what are the legal steps that i need to take make sure that uh, that needs to be in place uh, the team what you know what are the uh, what are the procedures to make sure that uh, the finances are clean uh, you know inquiring with the CA and having a system for that in place having a system for all these different things is it's a big deal it's important right it's it's not as simple as just waking up and saying I want to start a church uh, but it's important but then all of the system kind of puts uh, it, it gives some kind of an order to what you want to do isn't it there's like a signboard okay hey this is where you need to go like when you're going on a journey it says okay your favorite restaurant is five kilometers away you're not just going to stare at that signboard and say wow i have arrived nobody stops at a signboard and say i have arrived at you know you're still pursuing towards the 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 destination isn't it and so all these systems are like signboards that's leading us on to get to a you know to a place where everything is in order, uh, everything is uh, as a proper structure, etc. Um, etc. Et right. So um, I think that's the conclusion point of this whole chapter is that uh, remember the systems um, and see what will work best for you for your church uh, as you're leading a ministry, uh, and then at the same time uh, be extremely sensitive to the leading of the the Holy Spirit. Um, that's what's going to make the difference. Okay. Right, guys. So, uh, any questions or any thoughts? All right, then. Uh, well, uh, I want to stop uh, right now. I don't want to uh, just kind of throw more content 
uh, here. So we'll stop here. We'll resume next week uh, with the, the rest of the uh, curriculum. OK? Thanks for joining in, guys. Uh, take care. Have a lovely and a blessed weekend. God bless you all. Thanks, Pastor.